Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you doing today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope everything is good and great and wonderful. And yeah, I hope you're safe in this weird, weird world. Lately, I have been publishing, not publishing, that's weird. I'm posting some video. Nope, not video. Wow, I need to get my thoughts in order. Lately, I have been posting some pictures on my Twitter of me hand drawing some dungeon maps. So if you're not aware, I have been talking about Dungeon Dragons a lot lately because my kids asked to play. And I said, sure. So I bought the starter set and started introducing them to it. And I started talking about kind of the reminiscent, you know, the, the feelings that I had doing, re-diving into something that was a big part of my life for like 10 or 15 years. And um, so through that conversation, uh, Ignasi, the CEO of Portal Games, has asked me to run a game for him next month uh, for his birthday because he's never played, in his words, quote, a traditional American-style um, RPG. So I said, sure. And so my, my task is to assemble some sort of, a, you know, adventure for him that is a traditional American style. Like, I'd almost call it the hack and slash style is what a lot of people used to call it because it was very much this just combat based what are we going to do I'm going to you know cast some awesome spells and then I'm going to get to the town and everybody's going to throw their wealth at me or whatever um but I, that's not who I am as a storyteller and that wasn't who I was as a storyteller in my later years of playing but so recently I've purchased the 5th edition books and I've been reading them and I've been really enjoying how mature um 5th edition is and what I mean by that is the last books I purchased were 20 years ago, 3rd edition. I played tested for 3rd edition and I purchased 3rd edition. And um, I played a whole lot of 3rd edition. I never played anything up until 5. So 3, 5, 4, 4, 5. Never played those. Just 3rd edition. And prior to that, I played a lot of 2nd edition when I was a kid. And I always had problems with it. And 3rd edition addressed a lot of those problems. Well, here we are with 5th edition. And 5th edition addresses even more of the problems. Like, 3rd edition was flawed. Uh, but at the time, when I fell in love with it, it was because it was complex. Like, 2nd edition started off being very simple. If you started off with the old red box and you opened it up and you played, it was very simple. You had a very quick and easy way of generating characters. You just roll some stats, pick some skills, put some equipment on, you're ready to go. You had class, race, equipment, go. And you're out the door. Um, third edition added feats. It added, um, or well, I should say later on, second edition added proficiencies and, and, and expert expertise and started to kind of get more and more and more about the rules and less about this amazing world of magic and sorcery and, and dragons and dungeons and all that stuff. Well, third edition kind of took it even farther and added feats and, and, and it, it was even more complex. But at the time, I loved it because I had been playing prior to that. I played almost exclusively Earthdawn. And Earthdawn is a pretty complex system of, of how you gain experience and how stats work and how uh, skills work because it's kind of like as you level skills you get more dice and it it becomes this kind of uh, spreadsheet you know your character sheet becomes complex and then third edition came along and, and took a lot of inspiration from the more complex games that had come out around that time and I loved it but now as I'm sitting here reading fifth edition and I look back at that that era of gaming uh, the 5th edition has really attempted to say, you can play with this stuff. Now feats are optional. If you don't want them, don't use them. And I don't plan on using them. They're, they're just extra fluff that's not needed. As the DM, your job is to make things exciting. Make the story and the scenario exciting so that the player's main source of excitement comes from telling the story, not from tweaking things on a character sheet. Um, and maybe, maybe... If I'm feeling generous, I will give feats as bonuses for role-playing correctly. Or not correctly, that's wrong to say, but role-playing well. But the point is, I've been working on maps. This is where this all goes back to. Because I decided if I'm going to run a scenario for him, I'm going to design it myself. I'm not going to try to find a two-hour, three-hour scenario 
to run. It's a one shot. They're going to make first level characters. We're going to go through this. So I started working on a little simple scenario that is uh, loosely based on um, some storytelling ideas I had or still have for um, the book series someday that I would like to write. Uh, if I ever feel like I'm competent enough to write, I might actually do it. Uh, so it's a little bit loosely based on that, and it, the, making these little, making this little dungeon map, right? The the first part of the game. And I'm not going to show you detailed pictures because people watching this might end up playtesting, and I don't want to spoil it. But the this this scenario is like the first thing you do is this dungeon. It's not a dungeon; it's the sewers, but it's a it's a tr traditional traps, monsters, treasure, escape the dungeon, right? And um, as I've laid this all out and I've shared it with people, they're like, why, why, what's all these dead ends? What, you know? And the funny part is, when I was a kid, I can remember like sitting in school with graph paper notebooks and just sketching out these cool, oh, it'd be fun to have a twist over here that leads to a pitfall trap. Like, what? What? Who designed that? Who, who is the, who is the, you know, these ancient dwarves who abandoned this cave, why did they have a tunnel that dead ends into a pitfall trap? Like, what's the point of that, you know? Um, <laughs> and so I've, as I've drawn these maps, I'm thinking very practically about, well, this is supposed to be a sewer, so what does this room do, and what does this room do? Why are there rooms in a sewer? What are these extra hallways for? Why, why are there dead ends? You know, well, that's, you know, and I've really put a lot of thought and effort into that, and it, it amuses me because of how... The, the roots of D and D, at least my roots. You know, I didn't, I didn't start until the late '80s, so it had already been maturing for, I don't know what, like 15 years. I, I don't know exactly when D and D came out. So like, it had already matured for 15 or 20 years by the time I started to play. But I learned uh, D and D, or I, I, I dove into all of that earlier material, all of those just like hack and slash, you know, dungeon crawling, let's let's go get some gold and yippy adventures that were written back then. And I also, as I told you a couple days ago, uh, I wasn't allowed to play D&D &D in my house, so I had Tunnels and Trolls. And Tunnels and Trolls had all of these amazing adventure books that were just straight up go to the mountain, walk inside, and attack everything that's in there, and the traps and, you know, craziness. Uh, that was the, the key, you know aspect of all of that stuff so i've had a whole lot of fun trying to recreate that kind of giddy feeling uh with this little scenario that i'm designing and i think it's going to work out i think it's going to be okay i'm going to make some props and handouts and stuff uh even though it's going to be on zoom i'm going to make the handouts so i can show it on camera but i'll probably figure out a way to email it to them or something so they'll actually have the handout you know i don't know yet we'll see but that's all i wanted to share just you know Revisiting the roots of, of something that I haven't thought about in 15 years is is really fun. It's really, it's and, and I can see my age in in what I'm creating now versus what I created back then. Um, I'm kind of glad that I don't have all of the material that I had came, that I had written in the in the early 2000s. I'm kind of glad that it's all I, I get to bring those extra 15 years of experience along with me when I designed this thing. And, and the reason that I've been doing the drawing, I should have told you this, if I'm going to go through the effort of writing this scenario, I'm going to publish it somewhere. So it might just be a PDF on my website. It might be available for purchase on DMs Guild. Um, something, somehow, I'm going to publish this little adventure. But the, the, the hope is that it's actually a, a three-part series of quick little adventures, kind of a introduction to D&D, &D, introduction to this little storyline that i've set up so we'll see thank you for being here as always thank you for liking commenting subscribing being amazing friends and wonderful people i really appreciate you and i will see you again tomorrow today's word you should know to sound smart is cabotage it is a noun meaning the right of a country to control all air traffic flying in its skies after 9 11 cabotage became a major concern of new york city and its mayor cabotage c-o-b nope c-a-b-o-t-a-g-e